I am Daniel Lucchese. Hello, I'm Alessandro Baratoni and welcome to Food 101. Food, 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 people! Let's talk about food! Oh, Shafi, another week! Oh. Yes, fantastic week! <laughs> yeah. <a> beautiful, beautiful <laughs> for me. <laughs> oh, yes, how's Sota Sota, Shafi? Uh, crazy busy. Oh. <laughs> it was good, it was good. It was a very interesting week, very nice. Really, like, yes. really enjoy, like like usual. Definitely, busy, busy is a good for a business. We did some new stuff, uh, sotto sotto. We actually uh, did some uh, picture with some organic, uh, uh, all organic vegetable. Now, so it's uh, very good. Yes, people, please do visit Chef Alessandro if you going to downtown Toronto, right, Chavi? Yeah, that's right. Please do visit him, Sato Sato, one of the authentic Italian cuisine. So, Chefy, last week we talked about our milestones. Oh, we have a lot of milestones to celebrate. Like, number one, we are on the best. Uh, we are on the number 13 best food podcast on the planet. Wow, fantastic. And, of course, uh, our uh, second milestone we are we are have um, we according to listen notes we have a 41 listen score and we belong to 1.5 score or 1.5 percent popular show globally wow uh, that's another milestone for us right Shafi? yeah that's right and of course our 116 countries listening to us. That's another milestone, people. And Chef and I are so very grateful. Yes, we are. From the bottom of our heart, without you, uh, we are nothing. And, of course, our 1 million downloads. Fantastic. We have a lot of uh, milestones that we want to share to you. Of course, our books, our culinary books, uh, not only one, but now volume seven and more volumes to come, people. Available on Amazon and leading online bookstores worldwide. Plus our upcoming Food 101 Culinary Course. It's available online. Something that we are working right now with Chef and I hope you gonna try it and you're gonna learn the secret or mystery of being a good chef or being a good cook or being a good ordinary cook that make your dish delicious. Yes. Definitely. Right, Chefy? Absolutely. We are ready for Yes. <laughs> As a chef said, lots of hard work, but Chef and I can do it. Yes, we will. So, Chefy, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, today we talk about grissini. Last week we talked about ciabatta bread. The week before we talked about focaccia bread. Why not talking about grissini? For sure, people. So, Shafi, before we go on to grissini, can we do a recap what we talk about focaccia? Yes, the focaccia. Yes, focaccia. It's a beautiful, nice uh, kind of a pizza bread almost. And uh, it's uh, popular from uh, from Genoa region. It's uh, uh, can be a different way to make it. You know, it's uh, we can make with the olives, we can make it with tomato, just uh, plain with the salt, uh, rosemary, and uh, easy to make at home. Very very easy. And I uh, tell last time uh, uh, my little secret to make it with the ice. So you know, it's a good good uh, bread to make at home. It's easy to make. Yes. And, uh, Ciabatta will take a little bit more uh, time, but you know, at the end, you know, you can even make a ciabatta home, of course. But it's more like bread. Focaccia is more like a kind of pizza style. You know, it's a soft, it's uh, nice. And uh, today we talk about grissini. Grissini, it's uh, it's a very old bread in Italy. <laughs> it's part of the bread, and um, it's still in the family of the bread. But it's uh, it's the most famous uh, from Torino, Grissino from Torino in the Piemonte area. So, Chef, what do you think 
Gresini is more, which is more popular, Gresini or Focaccia? Uh, you know what? I think Focaccia and Gresini are both the same way. They're both famous all over the world, especially in North America. And um, yeah, Ciabatta was a little bit late. Uh, welcome in North America. What was invented the latest, I think, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, but no, Grissini, Grissini's got a long, uh, long history. You know, it's uh, from, I think it was 1679, something like that. And uh, so it's a very, very old bread. They call it, it was like a long uh, uh, stick bread, almost. But if you look in, uh, in, um, in the States, like uh, they call it like breast steak, no? And mm. uh, in Italy, they are Grissini. And then you can have uh, soft, you can have uh, hard. Uh, but of course, the most famous, the Piemontese style, it's, uh, the Torino, Torinese style, it's, uh, it's uh, hard. The Grissini, very thin. And um, I made uh, my own when I was in Japan. And uh, we made a, a, a little bit thick, uh, almost like a, a finger thick. And long as maybe, uh, let's say, uh, 20 centimeters long, about. Uh, very long grissini, and uh, it was uh, soft, soft grissini. And uh, they really appreciate it in Japan, they really like it. And uh, we made lots of dishes with that. We make it with apple with prosciutto, we put it as an appetizer, we uh, put the salad bread for the soup. Uh, there is so many ways to, different ways to, to use it. So it's, uh, it was very, very good. Yes. I love Grassini with prosciutto cotto or prosciutto cudo or prosciutto. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. <laughs> Why not Some... a culatello? Oh. <laughs> Since then, you yes. like so much culatello. Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Culatello with Grassini. Something else, people. So, Shafi, Grassini means in Italian. Is it the same breadstick? Uh, Grissini, yes, practically it's um, uh, the name of Grissino. It's uh, it's kind of like um, uh, make it like, a, like the form, like long form, practically mm. a long uh, form. Yes, and they say in Shafi that breadstick originated in 1643. Oh, mm. it's very old, yes. Vecchio, as they said. <laughs> oh my God! Yes, it is. You know, it's a, you know the casino. It's like almost uh, let's say like a, like a bread. Uh, uh, that it's made with the simple uh, uh, flour, water, and uh, yeast and salt. Uh, so it's it's almost like a it's a like actually it's a like a bread because the bread doesn't put no fat in. So and. Um, and take a little bit of time to make a race and uh, lots of patience to roll up. That's the problem. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> to make a little crescini take lots of lots of time. But um, yeah, like I say, you can make a bigger and uh, you know you can make uh, softer. So it's um, uh, easy to make a home faster too. Then uh, roll up really, really thin uh, Piemontese style, Torino, Torino style uh, <laughs> crescini. So, Chef, let's talk about the ingredients of uh, Grissini, the typical Italian Grissini. Well, the typical Italian Grissini, the ingredients are very simple. Flour, uh, water, yeast, and salt. Uh, later, they make, uh, you know, with uh, different way, they put some milk instead so to change the water. Uh, some other, uh, add some olive oil, you know, uh, or um, a kind of a flavor on it inside, eventually, sometimes they do. And um, if you put the fat inside, like you put uh, olive oil or some other different kind of fat on inside the, the, the grissini, you keep you make the grissini softer. So, if you want a grissini, a soft grissini, you can put olive oil or even uh, butter eventually or margarine. Uh, if you want a little bit hard, like uh, the classic Torino style grissini, you just leave it just water, flour, and yeast and salt. That's uh, without fat. Oh, wow. 
I love soft grissini Shafi than the hard <laughs> one. <laughs> but I love grissini with uh culatella. Oh. <laughs> So before Chefi, before we go on, we want to shout out to the people listening in Austria, the most livable city in the world. Wow. So, yes, Chefi in Vienna, of course, number one livable city in the world. We got 77% on chair. Thank you, Vienna. Wow. Lower Austria at 5%, Styria at 5%. Vorarlberg at 5%, Salzburg 3%, Upper Austria 3%, Carinthia at 2%, and last but not the least, Tyrol at 2%. Thank you, Austria. Thank you very much. Thank you. For supporting this podcast, you are one of those contributors of our 1 million downloads. Thank well, you thank so you. And we are counting for our, of course, 2 million downloads, people. <laughs> please, <laughs> co- please continue supporting us because this podcast is created to empower food, 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 like Grissini. So, Shafi, let's talk about the modified procedure or the traditional procedure in making Grissini. Well, the, the, the form of the Grissini, the classic, uh, the most uh, l- uh, traditional, you know, it's uh, uh, Piemontese style. It's uh, about long, uh, 40 to 80 centimeters. It's very, very long <laughs> as a Grissini. <laughs> wow. and, um, and of course, it's the, the, you know, the classic, it's the, dry, the, the crunchy one. Uh, but of course, you can make you know the 20 centimeter long and uh, you know nice and soft uh, in a different way. Like I say, you know you can use the you can use the butter instead, and uh, you know or the the olive oil to make it softer the the the, uh, the um, dough. And uh, yeah, you can put flavor rosemary if you want it. I, I have some many many of my friends made it with even garlic inside or. Uh, basil, like even pesto mixed with the dough to give a little bit more flavor. And uh, but yeah, if you want to skip the tradition, it's gotta be simple uh, without nothing. That's uh, that's the best way I think <laughs> to to have the grissini as a you know as a you can use like I say as an appetizer or you can use as a uh, even a snack because <laughs> we eat in Italy as a snack too. Definitely. So, Shafi, how many minutes in the oven if you bake it? Well, uh, if you use a very uh, good oven, like, you know, a, a conventional oven, you know, it, because the grissini is going to be very thin, if you, you do the dry one, it'll be about 15 to 20 minutes uh, uh, around the 350 uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, but if you... I want to make a soft one and a little bit thicker. You know, it's going to take us yeah, about 25 minutes, uh, uh, 325, uh, even 340, 40 about, you know, and uh, yeah, it will, uh, we, it will do a 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. And you see, yeah. it got a nice, really soft uh, uh, kind of uh, bread grissini. Yes, indeed, people. Let's try Grissini because something else. So, Chef, let's talk about uh, how would you present Grissini in the menu? Let's in, the menu for- in the menu, uh, well, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna serve the Grissini maybe with the side with the uh, regular bread that we serve maybe uh, any restaurant. And uh, it's always uh, the Grissini. It's always as I, I was always in my. In the 80, 90, it was a, a, a bread that you always find on the table as soon as you arrive in the restaurant in Italy. So when you sit down, there was already a basket with this grissini on the table. And uh, it's, it's a classic, it's a characteristic. And uh, so you can have as a waiting for the order. <laughs> you can use it <laughs> waiting for the first course coming. <laughs> you can use as a waiting for the second course. You can, you can eat anytime you want it, practically. But yes, the, the, we serve as an appetizer, sometimes with a roll with the prosciutto, beside the, the prosciutto and melone, or even uh, uh, just with the prosciutto, or with the other different kind of uh, uh, sal- 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 salami and uh, uh, prosciutto, coppa, mortadella, yes, anything uh, good as a charcuterie uh, set. 
And um, for soup, yes, you can always use Grissini as a side for, you know, instead to use the classic crackers here, you can just crack, crack the Grissini on it. Yes. And most of the day is that, but I, I saw sometimes that some people make it with the cinnamon too, as a dessert with the sugar cinnamon, and that's very good. Tell you oh, sure. yes. Definitely. So for dessert, Chef, you can even use Grissini. For dessert, uh, for dessert, yeah, just say if you put the sugar and uh, and uh, and cinnamon, yes, that would be great. Or oh, cocoa powder, but no, it's not that you can make anything specific with Grissini. Uh, never come on my mind for that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, tell you the truth, they never arrive at the end of the meal, the Grissini, because I always finish before that. <laughs> yes people you know why a restaurant offering bread first before anything else because according to the book that i read it gives you the urges to eat more to order more <laughs> this is something uh there's a characteristic of the bread that uh make your body to eat more that's why if you observe all the restaurant they offering first cassini or any kind of bread that's the reason behind of that so chefy before we go i'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast book 101 review with chris tetrable award-winning author and the author of the apocalypse trilogy and please do listen to my latest episode with safa burnell we talk about her second book of her quartet it's so interesting novel it's all about mythical mythology of the combination of norse and a greek mythology please do listen with uh, my latest episode with safa burnell plus one more please do grab a copy of our of course our culinary books not only one but seven now people and more books to come Available on Amazon and leading online bookstores worldwide. So, Chefy Grissini, uh, what else we can say about it? Uh, well, we can say that there the exists a different type of uh, aromatic Grissini, like uh, oregano, sesame seeds, uh, Grissini, uh, cumin, Grissini, uh, so many different kinds. You can find even uh, uh, the store already, uh, already um, uh, with the flavor on it. And like I say, it's very easy to make at home, uh, very easy to find a recipe even on the net. And, um, and you can make the original one without the fat or, or you can use uh, the oil, olive oil on it and then you can make the soft one or the hard one. So it's uh, simple like that. It's, very, it's a classic and uh, traditional uh, uh, bread of Italy, one of, the most, one of the most famous too. So... Yeah, it's a very, very good one. Yes, it was originated in 1643, people. So this Grissini is one of the trademark of Italian cuisine. So, Chef Potototo, are you offering Grissini? We planning to maybe change something. <laughs> we're, working, <laughs> we're working on it. And uh, we're going to do some, uh, some, something new. Let's see. Something new that is coming up. So uh, I will tell you later on. <laughs> yes. So Chefi invite our listeners to visit Sato Sato. Come uh, see me uh, Soto Soto. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, I suggest everybody make a reservation because Soto Soto is a very, very busy restaurant in, in downtown Toronto. And, uh, you know, it's uh, come over, come and uh, try the really traditional Italian food, especially made from, from Roman people. So, you know, really <laughs> Italian people. And uh, you're going to taste the real carbonara, the real cacio e pepe, the real amatriciana. Uh, come over, come over. Absolutely. Yes, yes. We're waiting for you. Italiano vero? Marisa, she's, uh, she's a, a Roman for, like me. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we are very proud to maintain the, the, the flavor of uh, Italy. Actually, she maintained for more than 30 years in Toronto. So that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. I think that it's even the anniversary now, the 30 years anniversary. So, yeah, it's amazing. 
Yes, people. So can you tell to Miss Marisa that they can gonna open here in Vancouver for Soto Soto? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will tell her. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask if she gets a meal. <laughs> <laughs> Be awesome. So super chef Alessandro, if you want to taste the authentic Italian cuisine, just like you are eating in Rome or parts of Italy, please do visit Sato Sato in downtown Toronto. But chef said you need to call first because they are always full book. Right, Chefy? That's right. That's right. So we are so very grateful for our 1 million downloads from the bottom of our heart. From now on, every time we do our episode, we are now doing our food for thought. Our food for thought, Chefy. Try and try until you succeed. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in the kitchen, people, that food for thought is really applied. Because in the kitchen, if you will not uh, commit mistake, you will not a good cook or you will not a good chef because learning from your mistake make you better and excellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, just like we're doing an example. The first time I do pavlova, it becomes flop. And I try <laughs> <laughs> and try and try and then it run, it becomes wow. Amazing, because I, I try my best, try and try until, as they said, until succeed. And then my Pavlova right now, comparing the first time I did, ah, oh, definitely five, uh, five plus. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, right, Chefy. So, Chefy, can you give an example or try and try until you succeed? Every day was a, it's an experience for me when I was uh, started uh, working in the kitchen. You know, even when I start to make pasta, or oh, make disaster I made, <laughs> you know, of uh, making pasta, or even uh, to mix uh, dough, and sometimes I even forget to put the yeast inside. You know, it's happened to you know to everybody at the beginning. You know, what I suggest all the time it's uh, making sure you follow a recipe, get a recipe. It doesn't matter if it's a, a chef recipe, it's a uh, internet from uh, from internet to get a recipe on the net or uh, or even a friend's recipe and make sure you follow the recipe don't just uh, pretend okay i put a little bit less this or a little bit less that because i i learned from my mistake <laughs> you know i tried yes. to change it was a disaster <laughs> so, <laughs> so after that yes i fix some recipe as I, I like it but there is a limit on everything so you know, you just got to learn when it's the limit on <laughs> adjusting. <laughs> but otherwise, you know, at the beginning, just, you know, follow the recipe like, uh, like, uh, like it's so easy and uh, they're going to come out very good. Absolutely. Definitely, people. And we're so grateful, Shepi, that in Qatar, we still number one on the Apple chart. Thank wow, you. fantastic. Yes, thank you, Qatar, for um, supporting this podcast. And of course, Chefy, in Canada, we are number 12 on Apple Chart. Wow. Thank you, Canada, for supporting this podcast. And we, Chef and I, we have a lot of milestones to celebrate. And no words can describe how grateful we are. Yes, we are. Welcome, people. See you soon. Bye-bye.